very much. It's a, it's a real pleasure for me uh, to be here. Thank you for the invitation to give a talk and to visit Korea. Uh, I'm going to speak about some, um, about some recent theory we were developing with uh, Victor Buchstaber from the Steckler Mathematical Institute and uh, the theory of 2NK manifolds. When I say um, that what actually what we want to do, somehow we want to extend the well-known results uh, about the connection between the combinatorics of the torus action and the algebraic topology of the underlying manifolds uh, to the wider class of manifolds, to the class of uh, to meaning uh, uh, the result that already exists in a case of toric and quasi-toric case to the wide class of manifolds where the dimension of the acting, uh, the acting torus is uh, less of the half of dimension of the manifold. And uh, as uh, in that cases, we assign to uh, uh, we assi using some analogous of the moment map, we assign to our manifold uh, convex polytope. And uh, as we know, in the case of toric or quasi-toric manifold, this convex polytope, together with the characteristic function, completely describes the, the, the torus action. But in the case when the dimension of the acting torus is less than the dimension of the half of dimension of the manifold, Oh, I need a microphone. Okay. Is less than half the dimension of the manifold, then in this case uh, it is not such a situation. And uh, uh, somehow the combinatorics of the polytope we assign is not enough. So the new in our approach is that we do not consider only just the polytope, we consider some uh, some, uh, so we introduce the notion of admissible polytopes, uh, which are actually uh, some family of polytopes span spanned by some subset of vertices of polytope we have. So, and uh, 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 introducing these admissible polytopes, we uh, build up CW complex and develop the theory which somehow enables us to describe the, the topology of this action. Uh, the content of my talk is as follows. So um, our, there are first motivating results. Uh, somehow w w we, uh, we didn't come up to, to, to study these things just, just theoretically. We first, uh, in, uh, or, uh, uh, originally, we first considered some examples, obtained some results, and these results were motivation for us to, to study it in more general settings. Then I will say about the, the theory, say the axiomatic of toric to NK manifolds, uh, show you that complex Grassmann and flag manifolds are 2NK manifolds and sh demonstrate you some seminal examples of 2NK manifolds. And uh, the, the preliminary, the main ideas of our, of this, our, uh, our approach is published in just recently in the uh, research report of uh, Oberwolfach. So when I said uh, what we had uh, uh, in the beginning, uh, we consider the complex Grassmann manifold G42. Uh, it's a manifold of uh, of uh, two planes, two complex planes in four-dimensional complex space. It uh, can be written as a homogeneous space U4 uh, by the transitive action of U4 with the stabilizer U2 times U2. Uh, this naturally has canonical action of the forus, of the torus T4. Uh, the torus T4 does not act effectively but it induces effective action of the torus T3 because the diagonal fixes every point. And uh, we proved our first theorem, uh, first result was that uh, this quotient, the orbit space of the Grassmann G42 by the action of T3 is homeomorphic, is homeomorphic to, uh, to this, uh, is homeomorphic is homeomorphic to this quotient where delta 4 2 is uh, octahedron so it's a it's just a direct product of octahedron and the sphere uh, a quotient by the relation so we have the octahedron direct of the octahedron and the sphere and uh, on the boundary of the octahedron each sphere we collapse into the point that's that's this quotient if, if one look at it more carefully from uh, as al algebraic topologies, one can see that this quotient is nothing else but the join of S2 and S2. So uh, this orbit space is homeomorphic to the joint S2, S2, and this is, is known to be homotopy equivalent to S5. And furthermore, we proved that this orbit space is topological manifold without boundary, uh, so um, it is homeomorphic to the sphere S5. So uh, our first result was that, that uh, when we consider this Grassmann manifold, 
its eight dimensional manifold with a, uh, eight, eight dimensional manifold uh, with effective action of the torus T3 so the dimension of the acting torus is less than the half of dimension and we were able to describe the orbit space and to prove that it's homeomorphic that it is sphere S5 and I would just to, to say a few words about, uh, about um, it's interesting just to mention, I'm not going to, to talk in the detail, uh, about uh, differentiable structure here. We know that S5 is, uh, is not exotic sphere. It has unique differentiable structure, the standard one. So somehow it suggests, it's just motivation that there is no differentiable structure on this orbit space X such that the projection is, is a smooth map because otherwise the orbit space X would be diffeomorphic to the standard sphere S5 and we know that, the standard, that on the standard sphere S5 we have the smooth action of S1 why it is not clear where such an action would come from on X since we divided the Grassmann by the maximal torus. T3 is a maximal torus which acts effectively acts on Grassmann manifold. And indeed, we proved that the quotient structure is not differentiable, the orbit space is not differentiable, and using standard techniques like um, linearization theorem and tubular neighborhood theorem uh, from analysis symplectic geometry, we described the smooth and singular points of this space. So we get the orbit space, which is topologically sphere, but the smooth structure, but the differentiable structure is far from wing. It has very, very heavy singularities. Okay, the next example, the next result we obtain is when we consider the representation of the uh, torus T4 into T6, which is given by the second symmetric power, given by the following way. And then one can uh, consider the action of the torus T5 on CP5 as the composition of this representation and the standard action of T6 on CP5. And uh, in this way, again, T f we get, have an action T4 on CP5, it is not effective, but T3 acts effectively. And uh, we prove that uh, the orbit space CP5 by, uh, uh, the orbit space CP5 by T3 is homeomorphic to the join S2 and CP2. Uh, here, uh, the dimension of uh, CP5 is 10, half of dimension is 5, and we have the action of the torus T3. <laughs> And um, this is not, uh, the, the proof of these, of these two theorem are not so straightforward. There are <laughs> quite work to, to do. And, uh, but we were, after this, we were interesting, we were interested in, uh, 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 just one, one more thing uh, I, before, I just want to say how these two uh, examples are related. We have the Pucher embedding of G42 of the Grassmann manifold into complex projective space. And this Pucher embedding is equivariant under the action of the torus T4. I mean on the torus T3, uh, and uh, uh, it implies that the orbit space of the Grassmann manifold sits in the orbit space of the complex projective space. So the sphere S5 sits in the orbit space CP5 divided by T3, and this inclusion, if we write this like this way, this inclusion is given by the inclusion of CP1 into CP2 in the following, by the following formulas. So actually we, we can describe how the, the, the one orbit space is uh, embedded into the other orbit space. And what we were then, after uh, obtaining the results, we were somehow interested uh, in, the, in the question what are somehow the crucial facts, the crucial techniques uh, we used in these two examples uh, to obtain such a results, to, obtain the, to, to be able to describe their orbit spaces. And I will, I will just demonstrate in, in the case of uh, Grassmann manifold G42. We use that uh, on Grassmann manifold we have the standard moment map, which is defined in the following way. Uh, this one can, say this one, formula one can find in the paper of, uh, uh, say, Gay van der Serganova, in Uspiech Mathematiskich Nauk. So this, is, this formula is a standard moment map from the Grassmann manifold to R4 where uh, uh, J is two element subset of, from 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, PJX are the Pucher coordinates for X, X in for, because uh, uh, any element of Grassmann manifold for 2, it can be represented by the mat matrix 4 times 2. And uh, this is a Pucher coordinate. Delta J is a vector from R4, uh, which have which has coordinate 0 one, or 1, it has coordinate 1 if its index, if it index belongs to J, coordinate 0 if its index does not belong to J. 
this is, I mean, this is the standard moment map for the Grassmann manifold, and actually it, is, it can be obtained from the Puker embedding of the Grassmann manifold into complex projective space, and then applying standard moment map of the complex projective space. Then this map is, uh, it is known that this map is invariant for the canonical T4 action on G42 and trivial action on R4. And uh, I mean, image of this moment map, we, uh, it's a convex hull of these, of, uh, of these vertices, and it is octahedron. Then we use the, 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 the next, next uh, uh, thing that um, on, uh, on Grassmann manifold G42, when we have the action of T3, we have six points, six fixed points. But there is the, also the atlas for Grassmann manifold, uh, con uh, atlas uh, consisting of six charts. This atlas can be defined as follows Mj, J is as in the previous case. Uh, Mj are all the elements from Grassmann whose jth Puker coordinate is not zero. And if some uh, point x, point, uh, if some uh, uh, L point x for Grassmann belongs to Mj, then it can be represented. So, so since the, the Puker coordinate Pj is not zero, so the minor that uh, correspond to J is non-zero. So actually, it may be it, uh, this element can be represented by the matrix A such that uh, the, the, the minor that, uh, the, mi the, the ma matrix that, that is determined by the, by the J is the identity matrix, and the four remaining elements, A, I, J, we define the homeomorphism of the chart, phi, J, X, by I, I, A, G, X, where I, A, G, X are the element of matrix A, because uh, one, one, two times two uh, part of the matrix A is identity matrix. It's not so important how, how these charts are, are, are we construct, but it is very important that we have a six charts. Each of these charts is T3 invariant. It is everywhere then set in G42, and each of these charts contains the exactly one fixed point which maps to zero by the coordinate map. This is one fact. Uh, the, the next fact we use is that when we have phi j, mj to c4, we have the action of T3 on MJ, and we have the standard action of T4 on C4. And uh, for any chart, MJ, phi J, uh, in this case, it is given the characteristic homomorphism alpha J, T3 to T4, such that homeomorphism, uh, uh, so such that local homeomorphism is alpha J invariant. It means th such relations hold. Then for any characteristic homomorphism, T3, T4, the weight vectors are pairwise linearly independent. And uh, the map mu, the moment map, gives the bijection between the set of fixed points and the set of vertices for the polytop delta 4, 2. So somehow these are one of the, the, main, the main ingredients, the main, the main properties we, we used when described the, the, the orbit space of the Grassmann manifolds when we obtained the sphere S5. And uh, so we, we, we somehow uh, wanted to generalize this. And then we assume, uh, uh, and then we int introduce the notion of 2NK manifold by requiring some properties which are analogous to this one, uh, which we call axiom. So we assume following to be given uh, uh, a smooth, closed, simply connected uh, uh, manifold, M2N, a smooth effective action of the torus TK on M2N, where K is between 2 and N. Uh, I do not consider when k is equal one when I when we have the circle action because this situation is uh, very simple. Every such manifold, such manifold, if it satisfies our axioms except one, is sphere S to n. Uh, so the stabilizer of any point is connected, and uh, we assume it to be given an open theta equivariant map from M to n to R k, whose image is a k-dimensional convex polytope, and uh, where R k is, is considered with trivial TK action. The map mu we call an almost moment map because it's not a moment map, classical moment map from symplectic geometry. We just assume it uh, exists. Image of mu we denote by pk, and uh, just uh, to mention, it is defined the characteristic function to which to each point assigns its stab stabilizer, and the function it uses in mapping to the orbit space. Okay, so the first uh, having in mind. What we have in a G42, the first property, we call it axiom, we want to be satisfied is the following. That on our manifold, there is a smooth atlas with the homeomorphisms 
phi i from m i to r to n, which we identify with c n for some fixed identification, such that any chart m i is t k invariant, contains exactly one fixed point, which maps to zero, and the closure of the chart m i is the whole, whole manifold m to n. So we require, we require these to be satisfied. Uh, as a corollary, we obtain that uh, the action of the torus TK on M to N has finitely many isolated fixed points. Uh, what do we, what we can get from, from this axiom? First, if we denote by M the number of fixed points for this TK action of M to N, uh, uh, we can enumerate the charts given by axiom 1, like m1 phi 1, mm phi m, and uh, we enumerate these charts, and uh, let yi be just the boundary of mi, it's m minus mi, they are closed sets, and they are techy invariant as well. And then we can define the sets w sigma, where sigma is some subset of the set 1 to m, as follows, so w sigma, is in is intersection of those m i j where i j belongs to sigma and y i l where i l does not belong to sigma. So we, we define the set w sigma as this intersection. These sets may be empty or non-empty and if this set w sigma we define this way is non-empty we say that this set is admissible and the corresponding set sigma, which is a sub subset of 1 to m, we call the admissible set 2. And uh, what is immediately easier lemma, but interesting, that admissible sets are TK invariant, it's uh, clear, that these are pairwise disjoint, and that they, uh, the union is the whole manifold m to n. So the admissible sets give the partition of the manifold m to n into TK, TK invariant um, uh, subsets. It just follows from, from this, the first uh, uh, axiom. Okay, so these are the example of admissible sets. Set W1 to M, it's, an, it's intersection of all charts, but intersection of all charts is not empty since it is everywhere then set in M, so it is an admissible set. W with one index I is also an admissible set because it is an in intersection just of M I it is intersection of somehow w i, it is intersection of m i and y, all y j, uh, all y j where j is not equal to i. It's intersect, but uh, here in m i, by, by the definition, we have the one, exactly one fixed point and uh, these fixed points, uh, uh, it, it belongs only to mi, uh, to just one mi, so it means these fixed points xi will belong to all the others yj. So uh, this wi will be non-empty set, which will contain fixed points xi, which belongs here, so it will be admissible set. Okay. Um, the, next, the next property we require is that uh, the map mu gives the bijection between the set of fixed points and set of vertices for the polyt of pk. Because map mu maps the, the, the manifold, uh, our manifold to the polyt of pk. Uh, if we assume this, then uh, we can introduce the notion of admissible polytops. Uh, let spk be the family of convex polytops. Uh, family of all convex polytops which are span, spanned by some uh, subset of vertices of polyt of pk and w sigma the family of admissible sets. Then we can define the map from the family of admissible sets to the family of admissible polytops um, as follows. Uh, if we take say w sigma w sigma we get it mi1 intersection mil intersection y, i, l plus 1, y, y, m. It's a double a sigma, and uh, in each of these, m, m, i, 1, m, i, l, there is fixed point, exactly one fixed point, x, i, 1, x, i, l. And we take these fixed points, 
by the, this axiom, x, x points, x, i, j, they map by the moment map to the uh, sub vertices v, i, j. So in this way, using these fixed points from, from this m, i, m, i, 1 to m, i, l, we obtain the vertices v, i, 1, v, i, l, and these vertices span some, some, uh, some convex polytope, and we define the map, s of w sigma is a p sigma, where p sigma is a convex hull of these vertices. Um, a polytope sigma is the S of PK, S of PK are all polytope, is said to be admissible if it corresponds to admissible sets. And uh, say the polytope PK is an admissible polytope, since uh, we get polytope PK, we get a polytope PK as uh, 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 when we take sigma is 1 to, to M, because in this case we get all the, all the vertices. Okay, and just one to know. So we defined the notion of admissible polytopes. I want to, to, to emphasize that for a general, uh, two admissible polytopes may intersect. There are, so we have PK, our polytope, and we, have, we obtain some P, P sigma, some admissible polytopes that are spanned by some subsets of vertices. And I mean, they, they, they lie into, um, uh, in, uh, in, in the polytope PK, but they may intersect. Somehow they do not give any subdivision of the polytope PK, and uh, it will, uh, if, uh, we'll see at the example of the flag manifold and the example of the Grassmann manifold G42 that admissible polytopes intersect. In this way, we obtain the notion of the singular point of the polytope PK. Uh, the singular point is uh, just a the point is a singular if there exists, uh, if uh, it belongs to the intersection of at least two, two polytopes. Okay. And now we somehow we say we have on the other side we have W sigma, uh, it is on the manifold, it is a miscible set. We have P sigma. P sigma is admissible, uh, admissible polytope, and we want to have the following relation to uh, that the mu, uh, con uh, the, the, that the W sigma and P sigma are related with the with the moment map mu. So uh, we. We, uh, we require that the almost moment map mu gives the mapping from W sigma to the interior of P sigma, and uh, moreover, that uh, it induces, of course, since mu is TK invariant, it induces the almost moment map mu hat from M to N from the orbit space to PK, and we require that on each uh, admissible set it induces the fiber bundle. This is the case in the Grassmann manifold, in uh, complex projective spaces, uh, in a quasi-toric manifold, toric manifold, this is always the case. What we get as a corollary? We get, uh, if we fix now, if we have a vibration, we have this fi uh, fiber bundle. So if we fix some uh, x sigma is p sigma interior, let f sigma be pre-image by mu hat then the set f sigma we call the set of parameters of admissible set w sigma and actually it is the fiber of this fiber bundle and uh, since uh, we have again we have this vibration mu hat w sigma tk p sigma interior since p sigma interior is a contractible we obtain that the fiber bundle is homomorphic to the trivial bundle then that the orbit space of admissible sets is homeomorphic to the just to the product to the interior of p sigma and the set of parameters f sigma and now P sigma interior is uh, more or less somehow not so difficult to, to, to obtain, but parameter F sigma is not. Uh, I just want to mention here uh, one uh, here one thing that uh, <coughs> uh, I said that we have uh, that we have the partition of the manifold M to N into admissible sets. But what is interesting, interesting and somehow dif difficult point here is that uh, when we take admissible sets, the boundary of admissible set is not necessarily the union of admissible sets. So we have the partition of the manifold into admissible sets. But if we take one admissible set, its boundary is not necessarily the union of admissible sets. It may happen that the boundary intersect some admissible sets but does not contain it. And I just want to, to demonstrate it to you. In the case of, uh, uh, we found actually that it is true in one example in Genfan Serganova paper uh, uh, from a Grassmann manifold G73. 
In the Grassmann manifold G73, we can consider the point given by such a matrix, and uh, if we contain the admissible set which con contains this point, it coincides with the, uh, with the orbit of algebraic torus for these actions. Uh, thus, the, one can see that the set of parameters for this uh, admissible set is a point. Uh, on the other hand, this element, this matrix, belongs to the boundary of, to the boundary of this admissible set, but uh, uh, the point, the, the, the admissible set which contains this point, W sigma prime, uh, is, uh, 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 the set of parameters is two-dimensional. So what does it mean? It means that uh, the boundary of W sigma it just intersects the, the admissible set W sigma prime, does not contain it. So somehow the, the set, we cannot say that uh, somehow that the admissible sets on the manifold are glued through the admissible set. No, the boundary may just intersect one admissible set and not contain it. Okay, and now, um, so we have, when, when we have a, a we have, we have this trivial bundle, W sigma TK to, to P sigma interior, and then uh, uh, since it is trivial bundle for a given trivialization, it's a standard procedure, and then a point says sigma and F sigma, we can define the leaf, the leaf of this, uh, uh, the leaf in W sigma as the following pre-image. We first, uh, for the trivialization C sigma, we first define pre-image of, of C sigma, and then pre-image using pi using the projection. So we define, define the leaf or the leaf of the admissible set, and uh, somehow require the following condition. The following condition, when we uh, arise, actually uh, from the, it is also it is also satisfied in the case of Grassmann and uh, manifolds and complex projective spaces, but it arises. It, it is motivated by the results of Atia Gulam and Sterman and Gelfand McPherson in the case of algebraic torus action. Uh, actually. Uh, which says that uh, if we take any admissible, admissible set sigma, that there exists such a trivialization that for any set sigma is F sigma, the boundary of the leaf, of the leaf, uh, of the uh, uh, W sigma is the union of the leaves for exactly one set sigma is F set sigma bar from F sigma bar, where P sigma bar runs through the admissible faces of P sigma. So somehow we take the we take one leaf, one leaf, we have P sigma, we consider admissible faces of P sigma. They are some they are some P sigma bar, and then the boundary of that leaf is the union of the leaves that corresponds. Uh, to, uh, to union of the leaves that correspond to the faces of P sigma. Uh, uh, it's, I mean, it's a generalization of the fact that uh, when we have uh, algebraic torus orbit, the boundary of algebraic torus orbit consists of, uh, uh, of algebraic torus orbits of the last dimension. And then, uh, if axiom four is satisfied, since we know that, that, that the, every leaf maps to P sigma interior, its closure will map to P sigma, and actually we obtain that the boundary of the leaf, of the leaf, uh, is the union of uh, of the leaves uh, W sigma bar, C sigma bar, C sigma bar, for exactly one C sigma bar is F sigma bar, where P sigma runs through all faces for P sigma. Uh, in, the, in the axiom, we said, we said that P sigma bar runs through the sum phases of P sigma, and because of this condition, it runs through the all phases of P sigma. Why is this important? This is important because we now have a corollary that any phase of admissible polytope is an admissible polytope. Very important corollary. So we had we we had a family of admissible polytopes, but we didn't know what about the faces of admissible polytopes. Are th are there admissible polytopes or not? We, we didn't know. After this axiom, we have that any phase of admissible polytope is admissible polytope, and we have uh, this theorem makes us possible to prove the following corollary that for every pair of admissible polytopes, p sigma prime, p sigma, p sigma prime contains p sigma. There exists the map which contain which connects their set of parameters, C sigma sigma prime from S sigma to F sigma prime, such that if P sigma two prime is containing P sigma prime is containing C sigma, then such composition holds. So this from this axiom we immediately get this map. 
and uh, now this makes us possible to construct CW complex uh, of admissible polytopes. So let sigma denotes the set of all admissible polytopes. We can define the operator D on sigma by D of P sigma of admissible polytopes is union of all proper faces of P sigma. Note that proper faces of P sigma, we just proved they are all admissible polytopes. We obtain CW complex. The vertices of this complex are the vertices of PK, and the open cells of this complex are just interiors of admissible polytopes. And we glue them uh, using, by induction using the operator D. We construct the CW complex, and it, it, it naturally there is canonical map from this CW complex to PK. To each point, we assign point in PK, and uh, that for any P sigma admissible polytope P sigma, there is the cell in, a, in, a, in this complex such that the map P hat is homeomorphism, because uh, we just because each admissible set has representative in uh, has a representative cell in this uh, in this CW complex. Uh, and moreover, we obtain the canonical map from M, M to N to CW complex defined the following way. If we take X from M to N, then there is X unique double way sigma, which contains X, and mu of X belongs to the interior of P sigma. On the other hand, because of the homeomorphism on the previous slide, there is unique Y in P sigma prime, in this W complex, such that P hat of Y is mu X because of this homeomorphism. And in this way, we prove the theorem that the singular points of PK can be resol resolved. So somehow we, we, uh, uh, we had the singular, uh, when living just in a, in, a co in a complex PK, we may have a singular point that belongs to the, to the, to the different admissible sets. But, uh, uh, but somehow we, uh, we, um, how to say, uh, the making, making a CW complex, we, uh, we distinguish them because every, every uh, because uh, it's, it's clear, uh, in a CW complex, we, uh, in a CW complex, uh, we, we just uh, resolve singular points because uh, in CW complex we glue we glue the admissible we glue the admissible sets and then may of course it may not intersect. So uh, singular points can be resolved. That is the almost moment map decomposes as P hat composed to G for the canonical for this canonical map. So in this way we do, we obtain uh, using admissible set we obtain the CW complex. Um, uh, but uh, admissible, so it means we can glue admissible sets if we ha somehow separate them to attain the CW complex. But as I uh, mentioned earlier, this is not uh, in the case of G73. This is not the case for the for the family of admissible sets, because in the family of admissible sets, that is very bad situation. Family of admissible sets, as I said, the boundary of admissible sets is not necessarily the union of admissible set. It may intersect some admissible set and not contain it, as the, this example G73 showed. But there are some examples, important examples, for which, uh, uh, for which this uh, CW complex of admissible polytopes is covered by the complex of admissible sets. Okay, and then altogether uh, uh, make make us possible to prove the theorem that the orbit space M to N by TK can be described in terms of uh, the CW complex set of parameters F sigma at the function C sigma sigma prime as the quotient, as the following quotient, P sigma times F sigma are, are just the, the quotient of W sigma by the following relation. Two points are in, uh, uh, are in the relation if and only if x equals y belongs to P sigma prime, which is in P sigma, and f y is uh, related in this way. So uh, we can theoretically describe the orbit space, the orbit space uh, in this situation. Okay, the next, but somehow uh, this this theorem is quite theoretical. So we would like to have some more, some somehow more natural properties of, for our space on, on our manifold, to, so to can say more. Uh, the next uh, uh, property we want to be satisfied is that the characteristic function is constant on each admissible set. 
uh, and uh, that if miscible set sigma prime is in the uh, closure of, of the miscible set sigma, then there is the strict inclusion between these two subgroups. Uh, if this is satisfied, we admissible set W sigma we call stratum. The, this notion comes from um, algebraic geometry. Then in this case, we can define the function. If this is constant, we can defi define the function from the set of admissible polytops to the set of subgroups of PK by C hat of P sigma is uh, C of X, where X is W sigma, since it is constant. And then we obtain T sigma, torus, which acts like of these quotients, which acts freely on W sigma. And by the construction, not using this axiom, we have that if P sigma bar is a facet of P sigma, then X, uh, X hat, then the stationary subgroup is contained in stationary subgroup of P uh, sigma bar. But using this theorem, we, we prove a very important and hard statement that if P sigma is a admissible set and P sigma bar is its facet of P sigma, then the, the stationary subgroup of P sigma is strict subgroup of P sigma bar. Then the co-dimension of C of W sigma, which, which is the dimension of T sigma, the dimension of the torus, which freely acts with W sigma, is the dimension of the corresponding admissible set. The dimension of the leaf, any leaf is to the dimension of P sigma for any admissible polytope P sigma, and the, the dimension of a, a set of parameters is always even. Okay, now I want to say about uh, 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 about to say uh, to um, to say something about local structure because we we uh, until now we worked globally we, we actually we except in the beginning we did not use the charts um, I just say oh, this is uh, uh, the level of linear algebra then when we consider an action of the torus T K on C N which is given by the rep some representation and the standard action of T N on C N we say that this action is almost standard if it is effective the origin is the only fixed point the stabilizer of any point X is connected its weight vectors are pairwise linear independent and for K equal N an almost standard action is isomorphic to the standard action then this representation can be written in this way the characters can be represented in this way so we get lambda i are the weight vectors for this representation. We obtain the matrix uh, uh, con con uh, consisting of uh, weight vectors. We may have, we denote by pjv the Pukir coordinates of this matrix. This matrix gives the linear map from r chi to rn. And uh, furthermore, for any subset, the matrix is defined by, defined by the vectors, gives the linear map. And the proposition is from linear algebra, if the map R car to Rj is induced by almost standard action of Tk on Cn, then the image Fj of Ck is a direct summon in set J. What is uh, important corollary is that the Pukir coordinates of this metric are minus 1, 0, and 1. This generalizes uh, quasitory case that the characteristic matrix of quasitory case entries are 0, 1, minus 1, and the weight vectors are primitive. So, our axiom locally means that, uh, that our action is as follows, that for any chart it is given the characteristic homomorphism alpha i tk to tn such that its weight vectors are pairwise linearly independent and the homomorphism phi i is alpha i equivariant. We have this in a, in a case of G42. As in the lemma we obtain that any characteristic homomorphism gives a normal standard action of tk on cn. And the number of fixed point is this. Okay, maybe since I do not have too much time, I will just say uh, this is the standard thing. But I will just say uh, this, this, the, 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 the next thing: uh, a linear map. Uh, for R chi to R is said to be height function of TK manifold if it, uh, it takes different value on the vertices of the polytope PK and the composition with the moment map is a Morse function whose critical points coincide with the fixed points for TK action on M to N. The condition for a, uh, H composed to me to be a Morse function does not depend, depend on the vector in general position. And we require that our 2NK manifold there is height function. What is the consequence? Uh, first, we may, uh, using CW complex, we may uh, have a graph of 2NK manifold. 
it's given by the vertices and the one-dimensional admissive point of PK. It's just one skeleton on the complex CWM to NPK. Uh, it, it is an valent graph. Uh, the height function produces the orientation of this graph, so we get oriented graph. And then, since we have oriented graph, the index of the vertex of the graph G is the number of edges in coming into V, and we denote by HQ the number of vertices having index Q. Then we have the theorem that uh, the, uh, uh, the two Q Betty number of the manifold M to N is just HQ. We obtain the Betty numbers, and the classical Poincaré uh, uh, duality theorem gives that HQ is HN minus Q. And the next, the next, um, in general, if I, we consider a graph, we, we heard it today, we heard it uh, uh, yesterday in Gintaro's talk, in general, if you have general graph with a set of vertices V, a set of edges E, then the graph G, G is called ZK labeled if it's a fixed the map from uh, its set of uh, edges to ZK, and the mapping uh, S from V to set to the set of to the ring of polynomials is said to be suitable if this difference is divisible by the linear form for any edge R which connects the vertices V1 and V2. And then it's, we have definition, very well known. The GKM ring of the label graph is the ring of all suitable maps with the point-wise multiplication. In our situation, what we have? We have the set of edges of the graph, because we have the graph. We have the function he had, which assigns to its edge uh, uh, some subgroup of co-dimension 1, dimension k minus 1. We have S1a, which is the quotient tk by xa, and the projection of, of, from TK to S1A is given by the vector LA. And we get the label graph of TK manifold together with the labeling given in this way. It's motivated by the construction of GKM graph. What is interesting that we have equivariant cohomology of M to N, which is given by the Borel construction, and equivariant cohomology is, uh, of M to N is nothing else but uh, cohomology of the Borel construction. And uh, we proved that the GKM ring under all these axioms, GKM ring of the oriented label graph of a 2KN manifold is isomorphic to the equivariant cohomology ring of, of manifold M to N. Okay, and now this says that uh, complex Grassmann manifolds, GPQ, uh, which are two-dimensional subspaces in CP with the canonical action of compact torus, we have an almost moment map where, where delta PQ is hypersimplex of the dimension pi ma P minus 1. FP, if we consider complex flag manifolds of complete flags in CP with canonical action of TP, the manifold FP has the almost moment map to P, P minus 1, where it is permutahedron, and we prove that all these manifolds are 2 NK manifolds. They satisfy these axioms. Uh, just, I can say how all these uh, admissible polytops, everything works. In the case of G42, mu of G42 is octahedron. Octahedron has six vertices, uh, and they have two coordinates equal to zero and two equal to one. Uh, the admissible polytops are octahedron, six four-sided pyramids, three diagonal sphere, any faces on the boundary, and these are how the set of parameters looks like. This is how the fate function looks like. So this is the example. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you.